Lossless Scaling is a great utility application for PC gamers that I started using quite a bit recently. The purpose of the application is really twofold. It's meant to upscale your games and or add frame generation to them, and this includes games that don't even have native support for things like DLSS or FSR. As frame generation is becoming more popular and upscaling is becoming more essential to modern gaming, I've seen outlets like Gamers Nexus and Digital Foundry cover lossless scaling. I think the videos from both Steve and Alex are great. I've watched them both and they definitely spend a lot of time going over the frame generation side of things and using the upscaling on more modern games, many of which often have implementations of DLSS or FSR. And that's great for people that might have older hardware that isn't capable of really running those upscaling algorithms at maximum performance or at all. The thing is, the way that these two have covered lossless scaling is very different from the way that I actually use the application, which is primarily for older games that maybe can't hit that native 4K resolution just because it's unsupported, or maybe the older game does support high resolution, but when running at that resolution, the UI is all messed up because of its scaling. In this video today, I wanna to show you some examples of lossless scaling running with some games, just a wide variety. We'll have pixel art games, 2D artwork games, some 3D games, and just kind of everything just to give you a good understanding of what the application can do for you. On this channel, I primarily make essays and retrospectives on older games. And a lot of these older PC games, luckily, run pretty well on modern hardware, but sometimes there's issues. One of the games that I've been playing lately for a video is Bastion, and I love this game, but there are problems here. I like capturing everything in 4K, because that's what I play on on my monitor and I want my videos to look as good as possible. When you upload to YouTube, if you upload at 4K 60 FPS, there's less compression that happens and generally your videos just look way better. Even if the source was shot at like say 1080p, you wanna upload at 4K just so your video is not bitrate starved. So when I was looking to set up Bastion to get all the best gameplay footage I could, I was kind of struggling to get the game running at 4K in a way that actually looked nice. I always reference PC Gaming Wiki. It's a great resource to look up games on the PC to see if there's any tweaks or modifications that can be done to help the game run better on your computer. Unfortunately, the solutions that were provided for Bastion to get the game running at a high resolution weren't working that well. I couldn't do the hex edits that they were suggesting by myself. I didn't really want to grab those executables that were up there. I'm sure they're probably totally safe. And also, I saw some comments even on those executables that the game was still running in a very zoomed out manner. For my testing, there's two main problems with Bastion using the runline parameters to run at 4K. The first is the super zoomed out camera. This makes projectiles a lot harder to dodge and just makes the game more difficult to play. And I don't think it was really the original intent for the view to be rolled out this far. The other issue I ran into with Bastion is related to its cinematics. These are also zoomed out and it allows you to see the neighboring images, which are not supposed to be revealed to the player. So ultimately the solution I opted for was wanting that 1080p view. So I played the game at 1080p, but then I used lossless scaling and the LS1 upscaling algorithm to upscale the game to my full screen at 4K. So here's some comparisons showing the upscaling differences from 1080p to the lossless scaling upscale. And then also for Bastion, I was using frame generation for a bit going for that fixed 60 FPS to 120 FPS, which worked quite well. But for recording purposes, I just went with the true real frames that were there and just the upscale. And I was really happy with it overall. Another game I've been meaning to play for a long time is Transistor. This is another game by Supergiant. And since it's using their engine and it's kind of an older game for them, it has the same issue as Bastion where the game doesn't really scale up beyond 1080p. And this has been an issue for me for a long time because turn-based tactics is one of my favorite genres of games and I love Supergiant, so I've been dying to play this. But with the resolution issues, it kind of kept me away from it. Luckily now, with loss of scaling, I can upscale the game and really have it run just looking great. Stasis is another game that I've been meaning to play lately, and unfortunately I was running into quite a bit of technical problems as far as getting it running full screen in a nice manner on my 4K monitor. Well, luckily with lossless scaling, I can actually take the windowed mode of Stasis and expand it to fill my full 4K screen with the LS1 upscaling as well. This is a game where if you don't run it in windowed mode and try to use the built-in full screen tools, it 
really has a problem. Sometimes it's just a little portion of your screen on the top left or it just glitches out completely. So this is just a way better solution and it's the best solution I found for running the game at high resolutions. Another thing that's nice with lossless scaling is that it has some settings related to the cursor. Probably the most universally useful of these settings is the ability to lock the cursor to the window because you're really just taking a little window and blowing it up so you could you know, move the cursor off of it. And another really useful one too, if you're playing a game that uses a cursor, um, I wouldn't use this at an FPS game or something, is the ability to have the application automatically adjust your cursor speed so everything feels nice and natural. One of the more common issues I run into with older games that technically support high resolutions is that their HUD does not scale well. Spore is a good example of this, where if you go beyond 1080p, the HUD just becomes so small, it's hard to read. It seems like for these games, 1080p is really the sweet spot to cut off. And then from there, I think that you can use lossless scaling to help scale the game up to 4K while keeping the HUD at a good size. Dark Messiah of Might and Magic is the first game I'll be taking a look at here that has HUD issues. When scaling the game up to 4K, certain elements of the HUD just become very small. In particular, things like the game settings menu, the save menu, looking at your spell list or examining items in your inventory, all this text becomes very small and hard to read compared to 1080p. So this is where I use lossless scaling once again. What I did is I set the game to run at 1080p in windowed mode, and I just used lossless scaling, once again this time with LS1 for upscaling, to scale the window to my full screen and hit it with that upscaling filter too. Here I've zoomed in two times to really show how small the HUD at 4K is. Leftmost, we have the 4K native image, and even at two times, it's still hard to read that text for the spell description. In the middle here, we have native 1080p running in full screen, just stretched out with no filter really. And on the rightmost here, we have 1080p upscaled to 4K using LS1. And you can see even the inventory text looks a bit sharper here using LS1. I also wanna make sure I show you some 3D graphics comparisons here. And I think here LS1 does a really nice job upscaling the 1080p to be a lot closer in visual quality to 4K. The clarity for LS1 here definitely looks better than 1080p, but not everything's perfect. Some of the little artifacts you can see at 1080p are made a little bit worse in the LS1 upscale, noticeably around the right side of this character's mouth. There's a kind of jaggy line there, and on LS1 it kind of sharpens it and just makes it more present than you would see at 4K. Another game that exhibits some issues running at high resolution is Bionic Commando, the version released in 2009. One thing to keep in mind about these HUD comparisons is that if you're watching on your phone or your desktop, you might be close enough that the HUD's pretty easy to read, but often I hook my PC up to my TV and game on the couch. And in cases like this where the HUD gets quite a bit smaller, it actually makes it nearly impossible to read from the couch. So it's really nice with LS1 that I can just upscale the 1080p image and still retain that very readable HUD from a distance. Here, the subtitles at 4K also become so small, they're basically illegible, and I often like to play with subtitles on. Sometimes the mixing of the audio is bad enough where I can't really hear what they say, so being able to read it is a nice feature. So now I want to escape just using the LS1 folder for a bit and look at the other options for upscaling because lossless scaling does provide quite a few and one of those that works perfect for pixel art games is the nearest neighbor filter or you could also use integer scaling as well but you might not fully fill your monitor. My game of choice for testing the nearest neighbor filter and integer scaling is the Jazz Jackrabbit Collection. I'm playing this on GOG and the game runs in DOSBox which I'm not too familiar with to be honest. But when I was playing the game at full screen, it looked rather blurry. It didn't have that sharp pixel look. So I went ahead and put this into windowed mode and then I used lossless scaling to use the nearest neighbor filter to make this look razor sharp. And I think it looks way better. Another big win here using lossless scaling is that it actually respects the aspect ratio of the original game. Whereas the full screen implementation here really just appears to stretch the game horizontally to get it to fill more space.
And that's not all that Lost of Scaling can do either. I don't play that many visual novels, but I wanted to look at some of them also because Lost of Scaling also includes an anime filter. So I went ahead and installed Higurashi. I have it on GOG, I got it for free. And I wanted to see what that looked like upscaled with the filter because that game apparently doesn't have really good support for higher resolutions either. All right, and lastly here, I wanted to try something totally different just to really test the flexibility of lossless scaling. I hadn't really done this before, but I thought it might've been a cool idea. So what I did is I took Resident Evil HD and downscaled the resolution all the way down to 540p. I went down through that resolution because with integer scaling, it divides nicely into 3840 by 2160 or 4K. So using this method, you could really still emulate that retro vibe while maybe having some enhancements through mods and such. The 4K footage you see here at Compared Against is actually running just through config edits. For Resident Evil HD on the PC, there's some more work you want to do if you want to get it running razor sharp at 4K. So this is another nice area where if you wanted to upscale the game from 1080p to 4K, it could be an easy solution if you can't be bothered to mod the game. And that's all the games I really wanted to show you today, but the main purpose of this video was to demonstrate the flexibility of lossless scaling. Honestly, I'm probably an outlier in the way I use it. I see a lot of people talking about the frame generation aspects and how they really like that. And no, this isn't a sponsored video or anything. I wish I was getting paid for this, trust me. It's just the way that I think it's cool to use utilities on the PC to do unique things that we are allowed to do because we are playing on a platform that has so many options. Lossless upscaling certainly isn't a universal silver bullet for all older games. But in the cases where those games don't have modding support that allows you to run them in a better way on modern hardware, it really works great. It's also very promising to see how vocal the community is about their love for the application, and there still seems to be a lot of development work happening for it. But that's about it for me for today. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you've used lossless scaling, how you like to use it, if you used it in any of the cases that I've really illustrated here. I think out of everything I tested, the one with Higurashi was the most surprising for me. I think they use Waifu 2X for the upscaling algorithm and I've used that on still images before, but it's really cool to see that it can work in real time through lossless scaling. And if there's any old VN I wanna play eventually and it doesn't have a good way to scale up, I'll definitely be using lossless scaling to improve the aesthetic. If you liked this video, and want to see more retro gaming content, definitely subscribe. I do all kinds of things, but mostly, like I mentioned earlier, retrospectives and essays on older games. Have a nice one, and I hope to see you around.